So uh, we're looking at uh, exponential decay functions today, uh, very, very similar to exponential growth functions, except now we're looking at the case where the parent function looks kind of exactly the same, except now we're considering when b, or, uh, when b is values between 0 and 1. So remember for a growth function, uh, b was greater than 1, so that was functions that looked like this. Let me do it on the side here. Uh, we had 2 to the x, we had stuff like this, negative 3 times 5 to the x. Uh, you yeah, know, and we had our translated version, I don't know, negative 3 times 5 to the x plus 1 minus 6. All of these are considered growth functions because the value b, b here, b, uh, was all greater than 1. Okay? Today we're looking at functions like the ones down here, and you can see all of them here, and all of these b values are between zero and one. Okay, so the b values are between zero and one. Okay, so if the b value is between zero and one, then we call this a decay function. Okay, a decay function. It still has all the same properties with uh, an asymptote here at zero. Just remember that the domain for all of our exponential functions is always all real numbers, so that's negative infinity to infinity. And the range, if we don't translate the parent function like these ones here, is usually from zero to infinity. Remember, it's an open parenthesis on the zero because it's an, a zero, the, the line y equals zero is an asymptote, so the function doesn't actually reach zero. So it's an open uh, parenthesis here when you write the interval notation. All right? Um, remember the shape is very important. I think you should graph at least two or three points um, just to get yourself okay with the shape. Once you're familiar with the shape and you can do it quickly by hand, then that's fine. Okay. Um, all right. So here we have, uh, let's do example 1a. We have y equals 1 half x. All right. b here is 1 half. So b is smaller than 1. So that's a decay function. And so like we did before, since we're not very experienced at this yet, we're just going to plot some points. Okay, So we'll plot some points. Uh, and maybe we should try negative 1, 0, 1. Let's try those. Okay, So if I do uh, 1 half to the negative 1, then we get actually 2, because you take the reciprocal of 1 half. And then if we do um, 1 half to the 0, we get 1. Remember, anything raised to the 0 power is 1. And then if we do 1 half to the first power, we just get 1 half. Okay? So we just plot those few points, and we make the shape correct, and everything will be fine. So remember, um, something you should always consider, the asymptote is here, all right? Because we haven't translated the function, so the asymptote is there for the parent function. And then we just plot the points. Negative 1, 2 would be up here. Uh, 0, 1 would be up here. And then 1, 1 half would be down here. Okay? And then just make sure you draw the shape correctly, please. You are learning how to do this still. But make the shape correctly. Make sure you don't draw a graph that crosses the asymptote because it actually doesn't. And then this is just to illustrate uh, still a decay function because b which is a half, is still less than 1 and greater than 0. But um, now it looks different because the a value, this is actually an a value, a is negative 1. So it'll actually look like it's decreasing, but we still call this exponential decay. Uh, sorry, it may actually look like it's increasing, but we still call this as exponential decay function just because b is between uh, 0 and 1. All right? So it's a little bit confusing. The graph looks like it's getting bigger, but we call it decay. But that's just based on a definition of exponential decay and exponential growth functions. So similar thing here. Oh, sorry, I forgot something. We're supposed to write the domain range here. Okay. So the domain, uh, like we said, is always negative infinity to infinity for exponential functions. And the range... You can see the function in terms of y goes from 0 all the way up to infinity. So uh, 0 to infinity. Okay. Uh, all right. So let's do this one. Let's switch back to a different color. Same thing. Make a little table. 
uh, maybe pick again negative one zero one and substitute in here so now we have negative one half to the negative one which would be negative and one half to the negative one is two okay and then we have negative one half to the zero that's negative one and negative one half to the one that's negative one half so you can see all our values have turned into negatives because of this negative a value here okay um, and so negative one negative two if you plot the points that's here uh, zero negative one that's here and one negative a half that's here okay and remember always there's an asymptote here at y equals zero and we just connect the dots so if you connect the dots you get something like that it doesn't have to be perfect but the shape is important that you get the shape correct all right um, and so if we look at this what did a do the negative a value just as always if the a value is negative it's a reflection across the x-axis so you can see basically this function just got reflected across the x-axis and became that function okay uh, and then domain domain here again negative infinity to infinity you can see the function goes this way forever and it goes that way forever uh, in terms of x and then range range is uh, now it's a bit different the function comes all the way from the bottom up here until it almost reaches zero zero is the asymptote so it doesn't exactly reach zero so negative infinity to zero would be the range okay um, so the difference between uh, letter B and letter A in letter B the function is just reflected across the x-axis Okay, it looks like it's getting bigger, it's increasing, that's true, but we still call this an exponential decay function. All right, so what you're supposed to do is graph this on your calculator and make sure that you see all these things happen. Okay, so um, graph this on your calculator and see if you can, uh, if you get at least these two graphs, the same graphs we did. And then also you're supposed to graph these and see what happens here, right? But we already know this. We've been doing this the whole year. So this one-sixth will be um, vertical compression, right? So the function will get compressed. So instead of looking something like this one over here, uh, compression will make the function be a lot less steep. Okay, it will look something like that. All right, that's what this is going to do. And then um, this negative three here, will be reflected across the x-axis, but then stretched. So, so stretched, let me go to a different color here. So if I were to graph this thing, I would expect to see something that's stretched like this and reflected. So it'll look something like that function right there. Okay, the, the asymptote for all of these is still y equals zero. We didn't translate it up or down or anything like that. Okay, and if you look at these b values, these are still what we call decay functions by definition. So I would encourage you just graph those in your calculator. Don't have to graph all of this by hand. That's why we don't have a graphing grid there for all of this. Um, graph this on your calculator and just make sure that you understand what's happening. Also, uh, the other thing that you see here is this is two fifths and this is two sevenths. Two fifths is a bigger fraction than two sevenths. So this function will be steeper than this function. Okay, This function will be less steep because of this 2 7th. 2 7th is smaller than 2 fifths, so the function will grow a little bit slower. Uh, or sorry, I said growth. Um, these are decay functions, okay? So they'll decay, this one will decay faster than 2 over 7th. The decay will be slower because this fraction is smaller than this fraction, okay? Uh, so something like that will happen. All right, guys, that's example one. Uh, I encourage you to just graph those things on your calculator and make sure you know what's going on with those.